Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P., Joe P. Zapia, and today, Pat Fitzmorris and I are going to look into the future. We're going to get the crystal balls out. We're going to rub them up real nice, make them all shiny, and win you some money to put in your pockets. We're going to be looking at player awards today. In a few weeks' time, we're going to be looking at some of the numbers, too, in terms of who's going to lead the league in this and who's going to lead the league in that. But today, we're just going to have some fun because the award market is... It's one of my favorite things. They don't call me Joey Futures for nothing. And no, I did not make up that nickname for myself. Welsh made it up for me. But Fitzy, uh, coming in fresh off the weekend, uh, I got to say, this is all about making good decisions. I made a decision yesterday that was questionable. Uh, I decided to play in a teenagers versus adults kickball game in the grass barefoot yesterday. And although the adults did win, I have to say my feet uh are, are angry at me this morning uh this is a bad decision i think we all make as adults where we still think we could do things that we did 5 10 15 years ago uh fitzy have you learned that lesson yet because i clearly have not yeah joe boy i thought you were gonna say some sort of minor bad decision like pairing <laughs> fish with red wine or something but like doing that yeah like exerting yourself playing with uh, the youth i mean i've i've made that mistake with uh my kids a couple of times in, in recent years and i think i'm done making that mistake like i've i've learned the hard way it's a bad idea now, apparently my uh my idiocy knows no bounds but people who watch and listen to the show they know that already and uh we did win. Uh, I did get close, though, I got to say. It was 6-2 going into that last inning, and they finished up uh, 6-5. So, you know, it got real close real fast. It's more the running. It's the barefoot running, not so much the kicking. And I'm in there in the grass. I wore my flip-flops. I did not anticipate kickball. But regardless, kickball happened. And you know me. I'm the competitive fellow. But we're going to get competitive here in the market. Uh, Fitzy also wrote a great article regarding uh, some of these playoff uh excuse me these uh player futures that we've been looking at here on today's show and uh Fitz where can everybody find that article too because I know you did this earlier and then you've kind of rehashed it and refreshed this article not too much has changed we're going to talk about some of that line movement but where can everybody get that PC wrote yeah uh go to betting pros and well actually probably the best way to do it is to google Pat Fitzmorris betting pros and you will find my list of articles and those will not be very far down on the list uh right after me telling people to bet Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey in the uh, celebrity golf contest against Tra Steph Curry and uh, Clay Thompson. Even though the Chiefs were big underdogs, I gave people that one. And indeed, the Chiefs did prevail, Joe. So, um, you right. know, if you can trust me on celebrity golf. How can you not trust me on NFL? I mean, you're my go to for that. So at the end of the day, that's what we're always trying to do. And look, if you want to follow us, too, you can over on betting pros at bettingpros.com slash Joe, bettingpros.com slash Fitz. You can follow our bets all year round. And don't forget, everybody, we got that contest that's popping to bettingpros.com slash NFL contest. Download the app. Come join us every week. We're going to be picking games, five picks you got to make every single week. A uh, minimum of 100 NFL picks during the season to qualify for the grand prize, which is that Jackson Smith and Jigba autographed jersey. We're also giving away numerous weekly and monthly prizes. So, again, bettingpros.com slash NFL contest. Join it. We're even giving away Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros shop swag, a one-year premium upgrade for both apps. So, really, like, you're going to get some free stuff for being good at betting football, and we want you to be a part of it. So, download the app. Or you could just click that community tab too on bettingpros.com. You can find NFL contests there. Join it. Have fun. We're going to be doing that all fall together. So let's do that. All right. We're going to start at MVP. That's the big one here as always. And Pat, I always like to pick two guys. Every year, this is what I do. I pick two at the start and then I monitor and I watch and I play this market like the stock market. I'm looking for the guys that, you know, who's going to move up, who's going to move down. You always get good numbers at the very open, which is why I think it's very smart to get in early on MVP. Last year, I had two names. It was Josh Allen. It was Patrick Mahomes. As soon as Josh Allen lost to the Jets, that was enough for me. I don't think you can win MVP when you get your butt handed to you by the New York Jets. And you know what? I was right. So I made money on that one because that was a plus 800. Mahomes is a plus 700, the same as he is this year. I took that money. I hedged with Jalen Hurts, who looked really smart for a while because he went ahead of Mahomes in those double-digit weeks. Then the injury happened. Then the rest is history. Mahomes ended up winning the award. So I'm back again, and I'm back on that Patrick Mahomes wagon. And I know it's chalk, and I know it's boring, folks. But are we going to make money on this? Is this number in week 10 going to end up looking like plus 300, plus 250? And if you want to just get out of it, you can? Yes. So I'm starting there with the chalk. We'll get to the other pick uh, for me that I'm going with this year. But, Pat, how do you approach MVP and who are your early investments that you think might be the good chalk, maybe the good long shot as well? 
It probably does make sense to focus on the quarterbacks, show. Quarterbacks yeah. have won the last 10 MVP awards, the last non-quarterback, Adrian Peterson in 2012. And um, since, let's see, the only non-quarterbacks to be named MVP since 2001. So we're going back all the way to the start of the uh, the the millennium, Joe. Uh, <laughs> Adrian Peterson, LaDainian Tomlinson, Sean Alexander. So mm -hmm. uh, and Tomlinson and Alexander, those guys were two, 2005, 2006. So it's been a while. Um, great value with Mahomes, man. He's been in the league for six seasons and he's been the MVP twice. And in his first season, he started one game. So basically two out of five, um, you know, and at, at the odds we're getting. So you, you said it's a plus 700 now. Well, look, um, it's plus 700 is where it opened. That's where I got it on bettingpros.com right now. The consensus best line you can get is plus 650 because obviously it's been bet pretty hard. But my guess is by the time we get to the season, they'll probably want to open it up a little bit more and it might bounce back to the seven because they want a little bit more action on it, especially as other guys start to get more buzz. That's my inkling. But right now, 650 is the best number you can get. And that's something you want to jump on because, you know, by the time we get into, I don't want to say six weeks into the season, I imagine it's going to be at least four or five. Like that's when it's going to lock in hard for the rest of the year and probably not get higher. Right. Yeah. And his, so at plus 650, his implied odds of winning it are 15.4%. He has won it in 40% of his seasons as a starter right now. So, And I, I do think his true odds are at least double uh, those implied odds of 15.4%. So, yeah, Joe, like I'm eating the chalk here, happy mm. to eat it and wash it down with a big pint of lager. <laughs> All right. Well, Joe Burrow was the other guy early on that I wanted to, but I, I've kind of held off. I was waiting a little bit training camp wise to see how things were going to break. Cause I thought there could be a possible historic season here for Joe Burrow and Jamar chase. If everybody stays healthy, uh, Josh Allen, I'm off of. Um, so I've got to go all the way down to the guy that I hedged with last year, because I look at the NFC Pat and I don't see any real contenders. I really don't I mean, maybe the biggest contender for the Eagles is inside the division and it's the Cowboys. I mean, you could try to sell me the 49ers all you want, but with that quarterback situation in flux, I just don't know if I'm buying it. So Hertz is at plus 1200. That's where it opened. That's where it's still sitting. And I don't understand this, Pat, because we know it's going to be tied to record. We know it's going to be tied. It's a look, these are media awards, right? So the team that has a lot of buzz, a lot of momentum, right? Getting a lot of publicity. Jalen Hurts at plus 1200 to me is the guy that we can look up with. And this team could potentially have what 14 wins this year. Like that's not out of the realm of possibility. And if they just dominate the NFC, why isn't Jalen Hurts a better number? I don't know. Personally, people may be not buying into what he did last year. I think that's stupid because I'm buying right back into it. So Mahomes and Hurts, those are my investments. Who are your other investments for MVP this year? The conference factor is big, Joe. You just mentioned it. I think that's a loophole to be exploited. And it's kind of mm -hmm. funny that of the eight MVP candidates with the shortest odds, uh, Hurts is the only one who plays in the NFC. And, and this is right. a team that is just loaded with talent on both sides of the ball. Howie Roseman, the, the Eagles GM, is an absolute wizard. Um, like, there's a good chance the Eagles just trample the rest of the conference. Really, Dallas is the only team I could see, like, sort of threatening their primacy in the NFC. So, I mean, Hertz, is, Hertz MVP candidacy is likely to stand out if the Eagles are just laying waste to everyone in their path in that conference. So, yeah, I like him. I think he's a bargain at, at plus 1,200. Here's and, uh, the fun part, Pat. You, you yeah. mentioned something that, and I didn't even quite grasp how deep it is. He's the only one of the top eight guys on the board in the NFC. Burrow, Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, Rogers, Jackson, Lawrence. Those are the top eight right. guys. Hertz is the only guy in this grouping in the NFC. The only so one. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I, I knew I know. it, but I didn't know it until you said it out loud that it really came that's to fruition crazy. like that. Well, do you have any fun long shots too? I know some people think Herbert could be that guy. You know, Lamar won this just a couple of years ago. Maybe he is refreshed and happy with the new toys he's got. But is there anybody else that might be an interesting long shot that maybe you're not investing in right now? I've already invested in Hertz and Mahomes. I'm locked and loaded there. But is another guy you either want to invest in or maybe monitor? over this first couple months of the season for this award. So the longest I've gone, Joe, is Trevor Lawrence at, uh, I got him at plus 1500. And I think that's about where he is now. I just, 
I think the somewhat longer odds are sort of tempting because he had that nightmarish rookie season under Urban Meyer and then makes huge strides last year under Doug Peterson, throws for over 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and the Jaguars go 9-8, and eight, make the playoffs, win a playoff game. I mean, if the rapidly improving Jaguars take another step and uh, you know can get to like 11 or 12 regular season wins, I think Lawrence would, you know, his MVP candidacy might pop at that point because he's leading this upstart team, um, you know, and and continuing the ascent. So uh, if the numbers are good for him, and I expect them to be again, and if the Jaguars take that step step up in class, I think he could hit. Yeah, I think you are not far off at all. Uh, we have not seen the best of Trevor Lawrence, and now that he has Calvin Ridley, if that all works out to what the high-end potential of that relationship could be, could be a huge thing for Trevor Lawrence. Let's take a look at AP Player of the Year, which is, you know, kind of like the consolation prize. Like, you're not a quarterback, so we're going to give you an award. That's kind of what this has become. And last year, on this very show, I sat here and I got up on my soapbox and I yelled and screamed about Justin Jefferson at plus 1,400. And wouldn't you know it, it ended up hitting. So if you invest in that, it was good. And guess what? Justin Jefferson, this number open at plus 1,000. Right now, you can get it plus 1,400 again if you want to go down that well. It's hard not to like it. Uh, Jamar Chase at plus 1,200 is actually the uh, the top of this board right now. Now, Chase is the guy that I bet early for this, but now that Jefferson's gone from plus 1,000 to plus 1,400, I'm going to hedge here with those two guys. It's going to be Chase. It's going to be Jefferson for me. And here's my argument for the rest of this group, right? It's, you know, McCaffrey, obviously, you know, he – He's capable of a huge season, but I think there's so much injury risk built into McCaffrey with the workload he's had in his career, how many years he's been in the league. I don't think it's going to be a quarterback like a Lamar or a Fields or some of these other guys that are on this grouping. To me, it's quarterback or bust for MVP. And this is the award that they typically like to give to the non-quarterbacks if you look at what's going on. There's some interesting guys outside of this. Cooper Cup is a fascinating long shot if he should get back to the Cooper Cup of a couple years ago. He is opened up at plus 1,400. That number now is plus 3,000. That's a huge long shot. I think Tyreek Hill plus 2,000, also intriguing on this board. But Chase and Jefferson at the top for a reason, and you're getting spectacular odds on them. So I would keep this one simple. Pat, how do you feel about this? When you want to sprinkle some shares on a few different guys or kind of hyper-focus on the two and uh, which two, if that? So our approach on this might diverge a little bit here, Joe, because I I have found this award to be so unpredictable that um, I like I just have a hard time taking anyone at odds shorter than like 20 to one. And it's right. it's because like 12 of the last 25 years, the same player was MVP and offensive player of the year. But like you said, we have seen a trend of late where now not a single player has walked away with both awards since 2018, Patrick Mahomes. Um, and and it used to be like you didn't ever want to take a wide receiver for this because the only wide receiver who ever won it was Jerry Rice. He won a couple of them. But now in three of the last four years, we've seen wide receivers win it. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Thomas, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So suddenly wide receivers are looking viable. I don't think the price is quite right on Jefferson or Chase. I, I'd be more inclined to take Jefferson at the longer odds. Um you know, if, if you are inclined to go that way. But I do like Cooper Cup, Joe, at plus 3,000. I mean, he won this award in 2021 and yeah. was on track for another good season last year until the high ankle sprain kind of ended his season prematurely. Man, I mean, 145 catches, 1,947 yards and 16 touchdowns in 2021. Just spectacular. And right now, the Rams have few other pass catchers, again, on the roster. And like if Matthew Stafford can just stay healthy and turn in one more decent season, Cup should once again have just this dazzling set of numbers right. that are going to attract attention. So I I think he's a pretty good bet at his price at plus 3,000. And I actually kind of like Mahomes, Joe, at, <laughs> at plus 3,500. Like, are, are we sure that this is a non-quarterback award? Like, I know it's been trending uh, that like way. The, if, you're not wrong. Like, you're not wrong. I think if they give it to a non-quarterback, it could be like the feel-good story if it's a Fields who really sure. pops this year and has like a thousand yards rushing and you know thirty-five hundred yards passing, but isn't good enough. Like the Bears aren't good. Um, you know, Lamar kind of fits that bill too, and they're both really close in price. Twenty-five hundred for Jackson plus twenty-eight hundred for Fields. 
I'm with you on Cup. Like Cup is the one that's kind of like you circle it. You're like, well, if you could stay on the field and Stafford stays on the field, it's the combo that I'm worried about, like that combination of both those things happening. But I, I throw out the running backs for this award because I just don't see anybody. I don't think it's McCaffrey. I don't think it's Chubb. I don't think any of those guys this year can challenge for this award. Maybe if Bijan just takes everything by storm, but we'll get more to Bijan in a second. I, do, I still like the Chase and Jefferson odds. You get 10 to 1 on something, you could bet that and make some money on it. And they're going to be very public figures for this award. And I think maybe rightfully so. Uh, but the Mahomes thing, very interesting as well. Let's switch gears to Defensive Player of the Year. This is another one. This was disappointing for me. Last year, I was on Micah Parsons. He had won Rookie of the Year the year before, the defensive player. This year, he is at the top of the board. It opened at plus 700 as soon as it came out. Boom, I put money on it because why? Now, the best number you can get on it is plus 550. The other people in this award at the top, you got Miles Garrett at plus 800 on betting pros. You got TJ Watt plus 850. Nick Bosa at plus 14. Sauce at plus 17. Then a little bit further down, you got Max Crosby, uh, Aaron Donald, Hassan Reddick, who had a great season last year for the Eagles. But look, a lot of times this is about cumulative sack totals. This is about, you know, once again, playing for public teams. TJ Watt plays for, you know, a very public team with the Pittsburgh Steeler defense, right? That Steeler defense, it was a very famous thing. The same thing with Nick Bosa, right? Coming off of last year's award. Parsons was ahead. And then in that tail end of the season, you know, after Watt had that injury, Bosa went ahead of Parsons and the rest is history. But Pat... I keep coming back to this one thing. Last year, Micah Parsons in the offseason, or should I say this past offseason, he found Andrew Wentworth. He worked out with him in Los Angeles to understand the offensive line position better. When you put in that kind of work, to me, that's a guy on the precipice of a very special season. Micah Parsons has speed. He's got power. He's got sack ability. He's got versatility. He's got everything you want, and you're still getting a pretty good number on this one where I think Micah Parsons could really just completely break out and dominate the league this year what are your thoughts on defensive player of the year and some of the guys that are the top candidates for it so we've seen the sack leader walk away with this award in three of the fa- three of the past five seasons um it's it's clear nfl defensive player of the year voters value sacks a great deal i mean heck joe a watt brother has won this award in four of the last 11 years oh, that's true so, yeah it, it is a sack. Like, that's not to say a defensive back can't win it. We've seen that happen. Uh, Stefan Gilmore won it in 2019. Um, and then, you know, back in the first decade of the 2000s, we saw Ed Reed, Bob Sanders and Troy Palomalu. It was a safety award for a while. So um, but I'm with you on Parsons. I mean, he is the he is the shortest odds for for good reason. He's been in the league two years and he's finished second in the DPOY balloting both times. Uh, 13 sacks as a rookie in 2021, 13 and a half last year. PFF graded him as the second best edge rusher in the league last year behind only Miles Garrett. And Joe, here's the big thing. Cowboys are a glamour team, so they are going to be in the spotlight more. And, you know, they're going to play more high profile games. And uh, Parsons defensive exploits will be prominently featured in those games. So, yeah, I think he's a really good play at um I'm sorry. What is he now? He's down to plus five fifty. Yeah, plus five fifty already. So look, yeah, the and, you, and I'm not the guy dropping. who loves to bet the cowboy stuff. Like the Cowboys are public teams. Like betting the Yankees. You know, it's a little like ugh, you roll your eyes. You don't want to do it. You hold your nose and you do it. But I think there's certain instances where, like you said, it works in your favor, right? They are a public team, which means primetime games, which means more discussion, more talk. So if Parsons is good. He's going to be great, and if he's great, it's going to be legendary in terms of what the press clippings are going to be about this season for him. And look, there's some definitely worthy guys. I know, you know, you've talked about Sauce Gardner maybe having that opportunity. My long shot is Quinn and Williams on the Jets for the same reason, because I think I'm with you. The Jets defense is going to get a lot of publicity. They're getting a lot of love already off hard knocks. Quinn and Williams is that long shot right now. He is at plus 3,300. If you want to throw a dart on somebody, he's behind Jones, Hutchinson, Hassan Reddick, all those guys. That is a huge long shot odds, but I don't think a crazy conversation. I know you can make a case for Sauce Gardner too, but the thing that I would come back to with Sauce, you talk about numbers, right? Totals for sacks. He's not going to have a lot of picks because people aren't going to throw to him. Can he create this Revis Island point 2.0 <laughs> basically around him where everybody just starts to coalesce around him being the best corner in the league and that hype train has a has basically a whole uh, life of its own 
Yeah, that's the thing. He needs to become like the NFL's iconic cornerback. Right. And, and there's competition. You know, Patrick Sertan in, in Denver is terrific. And but the high profile thing does matter, Joe. And it's why I, I like your Quinn and Williams case and, and you know, might have to get in on that action myself. The Jets are going to be a very public team. We know that defense is terrific and it's going to shut people down. Um Sauce, you've got the the cornerback thing working against you a little bit. Only four cornerbacks in the last 30 years have won the award. Uh, Rod Woodson, Deion Sanders, Charles Woodson, <laughs> Stefan Gilmore. But, you know, I do think with, with Sauce being the defensive rookie of the year last year, like he's already getting some acknowledgement, uh, led the league in passes defense. He was PFF's highest graded cornerback. The spotlight thing is big, but the one thing that could be a problem, Joe, is if teams just don't throw at him. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to see sauce with 10 interceptions this year. People no, just no, aren't no. going to challenge him mm -hmm. like that. But um, if he does become like this, why? Myth oh, mythical. Why, yeah. yeah. Like, he has to become Myth a mythology right. like Revis did, or, you know, for that year, the Gilmore was, was as good as he was or Rod Woodson, right? Like, like those got I me mean, talking about some hall of famers there with Woodson and Dion and those guys. And Dion also returned kicks. So like for him, there was mm -hmm. also that extra publicity he used to get because yes. he was such a fascinating player. And Dion was a guy that sometimes you would throw towards because like you want to take couldn't advantage tackle. of his aggressiveness and he couldn't tackle. So the difference lies there. Uh, it's great to watch him working one on one with Garrett Wilson, though, like uh, of all the fun parts of hard knocks. That's definitely one that I've enjoyed watching. I don't know if you've gotten to see that at all, but it's it's a good time uh, before we get to the rookies and we'll do comeback player of the year and coach of the year. I just want to remind everybody you've got a chance to win an Aaron Jones autographed green bay packers jersey straight from the closet of pat fitzmorris that's right he is donating it to us no i'm just kidding it's it's of course from betting pros all you have to do to win that aaron jones jersey is subscribe to betting pros youtube click that bell to let goes ding for notifications drop a comment below give us your picks we want to interact with y'all here on the channel so if you've got picks here for award season for nfl early going who are your favorites for mvp who's your favorite for defensive player of the year who's your favorite for rookie of the year all that stuff we want to know Drop the comments below. And again, make sure you turn that bell on so you know if you're the big winner of the Aaron Jones jersey. Again, comment, subscribe. It's pretty easy. That's all you got to do. Uh, all right, Pat, let's get to the rookies here. Uh, this is another one, too, or just, you know me, it's real easy. Now, this number for B. John Robinson for Offensive Player of the Year, uh, rookie-wise, opened at plus 175, and you can get it at plus 300. Now, plus 300, I'm all in. Plus 175, I was a little, eh, not so sure. I know typically, again, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks come into the league now, start right away. I just don't know if any of these quarterbacks are set up for success for this award. Whereas I look at Bijan at the three to one, and I say, yeah, that makes sense. And if it's not Bijan, I think I'm surpassing some of these quarterbacks, and I'm possibly looking at a wide receiver, and I'll get to that name in a second. But for one of these quarterbacks, whether it be Bryce Young, Richardson, or Stroud, I feel like it's got to be a, a performance where they get to the playoffs and maybe Bryce Young has the clearest path on paper to do that in that division. That's a little weak with the talent around them. That's probably better than what Stroud is being surrounded with. And Richardson looks like a huge work in progress, especially with Jonathan Taylor's nonsense this offseason. How do you see this rookie board? Because I think this one is a little bit more interesting than in years past. I'm totally with you on Bijan, Joe. At plus 175, I don't see value, but at plus 300, I'm mm -hmm. I'm smashing that if I can get it. At quarterback, I totally agree with you, too. I, I just don't think the Colts or the Texans are going to be good enough to yeah. propel Stroud and Richardson into offensive rookie of the year consideration. Like, I just don't see that happening. And yes, the, the Panthers have a much easier path in a division with the, you know, Saints, Falcons, Buccaneers. So plus, I also think, Joe, Bryce Young is closer to being a fully formed NFL starting quarterback than Richardson or Stroud are. I think those guys are going to need a little bit more seasoning, whereas Young has been widely regarded as this savant who just picks up offenses so quickly and is like the point guard, the distributing point guard, the Chris Paul of the NBA. <laughs> so if he, if he really is that and shows that right away and the Panthers win the NFC South, then I think he's got an excellent chance to pay off at plus 500. But like, I don't think it's a great bargain at those odds, but I see maybe a smidge of value there. I see a little bit of value later on the board. And again, full transparency here on the show. I always tell people what I'm betting, what I'm in on. Uh, you can go follow me, bettingpros.com slash Joe. You can go watch everything too. It's very transparent. 
Zay Flowers is the interesting one to me that I'm starting to, again, coalesce around in my brain because plus 3,000 is the number for Zay Flowers. And I think there's a good chance that he is the number one receiving option for the Baltimore Ravens this year. I don't think that's a hot take. I think it's actually kind of lukewarm and just kind of obvious. I mean, Odell's coming off knee surgery. He's an older player. Uh, I think he could still be useful. I know Mark Andrews is terrific talent. But, you know, and Rashad Bateman's never on the field, so I don't even want to hear about Bateman. But my thing here, Pat, is I keep going back to the same thing, which is, you know, sometimes it is the easy answer and it's right in front of you. And some, you know, you watch Zay Flowers, you listen to what's going on in camp, you see all the the buzz around him. And I think it's all warranted. Like this was a guy had a great college career. You're a big CFB guy. You know, I know Thor will, will back this up as well. And all of our BP folks, you know, on the college football side, I think it's a real chance that if he does have the season that I think he's capable of in fantasy, this is where fantasy and wagering kind of overlap a little bit. He could push for this award. I still think it would be tough for him to win it. Cause I just think Bijan it's Bijan or bust for me here. But Zay's the one that if I want to throw a dart on somebody late, that's the one guy for me. Now, defensive player of the year for the rookie side. This is another interesting one. Will Anderson's at the top of this board at plus 500. Jalen Carter is the number two guy. It was plus 800. I wish I bet it then. It's down to plus seven. This is when I got in on Jalen Carter. Uh, you got Witherspoon. You got Christian Gonzalez, both the corners at plus 1,000 and Gonzalez at plus 1,200. Uh, Tyree Wilson, who could be a very big, you know, sack specialist here, especially working on the other side of Max Crosby. You can see a lot of, you know, no double teams for him because everyone's worried about Crosby. So Wilson could have a huge season. Potentially, you mentioned sack totals earlier. Uh, But to me, Jalen Carter is that chalk that stands out because he was that guy who was probably going to be top of the board before all the extracurricular things were going on there that had to get solved and, and resolved with him. But man, he ends up with the Eagles, another high profile NFC dominant team, a great defense. I'm on Jalen Carter for this award on the chalk. What are your thoughts on defensive rookie of the year? First of all, I agree with you on Zay Flowers. Interesting pick. I mean, Lamar Lamar Jackson calls him joystick. That's an indication (laughs) of what sort of athleticism and movement ability Zay Flowers has. And, uh, you know, he's obviously getting a big quarterback upgrade going from Boston College to Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So if he can get over that key thousand yard threshold, I think he has a good chance. I'm with you on defensive rookie of the year, Joe. Follow the sacks again. And um, like, I don't know if Jalen Carter at his odds, as good as the Eagles pass rush is, and they led the league in sacks last year. Like, I don't know if he's going to get to double digits playing on the inside. The guy kind of like more on the Eagles at, at much longer odds is Nolan Smith. Um, also with an interesting one, too. Yeah. Sub 4-4 four, four speed screaming off the edge. And, you know, they've got so many pass rushers on that team. Like, the, <laughs> it's a terrifying situation. I know oh Reddick had thumb surgery, but they say he's going to be ready week one. I mean, I just the Eagles are bust, man. I'm telling you, I'm in. Let's go. And opponents can't scheme to to stop a single pass rusher on that team. You just can't, or uh, you're going to get destroyed by someone else. And Nolan Smith could be the the someone else in this defense. And I also sort of like Will McDonald. I know yeah, you sort too. of like him too, mm-hmm. right? Get get a sack artist on a good defense. And yeah. when you get Smith and McDonald at longer odds than you're getting some of these favorites, yeah, count me in. Yeah, Will McDonald is definitely another one, too, where that guy just, again, high motor, gets to the quarterback, has is really quick off the line. Um, and, and this is, you know, again, we talking about it. I don't know why I keep going back to it, but it's I think it's because we don't always get to watch this level. So whenever you watch on Hard Knocks, the granular level of granular, it's hard for me to speak sometimes, granular level. There you go. Third time's the charm of of things where you're looking at it and you're watching players work and watching rookies work and you see rookies who just hit the ground running and you're watching will mcdonald work on the offensive linemen of the jets who are pretty good it says a lot to me uh mcdonald's another guy too and you look at the odds for him plus 2500 for this award nolan smith plus 2200 those are two long shots to circle i agree with pat on both of those uh so we'll move on to comeback player of the year and coach of the year I guess here's the question with comeback player of the year. I'm going to keep this brief. Tamar Hamlin's already at minus odds. He minus 150. Everybody bet the crap out of it. Now it's minus 285. You can't even get it. So do we just punt this award completely or can anybody else? I mean, John Mechie's the only one that comes to mind for me because the kid came back from cancer. So like, it's like, is this a, <laughs> are we, can anyone's story match the Tamar Hamlin story? I guess the answer is probably not. So do you just stay away from this completely all season, Pat? 
I'd almost bet him at the minus odds, Joe. I mean, like, <laughs> it's not and, bad. And generally, right. like, the, I the next bet it at one fifty. I didn't have the cojones right, to do it. Right. Just... The, the next <laughs> bet I place on comeback player of the year will be the first because I don't like betting on sentimentality over mm-hmm. results, which is what this too often tends to be, and I think this year especially. But of course, with what Demar Hamlin went through last year and how high profile that story was, yeah, he should be the runaway favorite here, and and he is. Um, you know, no one likes betting awards at minus money. Like that just seems like you're you're walking into a bear trap. But in this case, I th- I think you could make a case for putting something down on him and uh, very likely being rewarded for it. All right, last one's coach of the year, and this is my Achilles heel. This is the one that I I always think I have a good beat on, and then I never do. So I'm looking at two guys this year: Arthur Smith, because again, I've been on the Falcons. It's been the theme of the show. I've been watching the last couple of weeks. Ray Bond likes the Falcons. Rebar likes the Falcons. Joey P likes the Falcons. I don't know what Pat thinks about the Falcons, but Arthur Smith at plus 1,400. They can win that division. I think that makes a lot of sense. I like Robert Sala to a plus 1,600, but because that Jets crappy schedule to open the season, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the Jets to be 2-5, and five, and I'm going to look at that Robert Sala number again because I bet it will be even better. And if they finish strong, what a story that would be if the Jets get into the playoffs or even, dare I say, win that division. Pat, any inclinations, any early thoughts on Coach of the Year, or is it a stay away? I think the bar is too high for Salah. I'm interested in two NFC South coaches. And uh, I, I apologize for not having the odds on Frank Reich in front of me right now, Joe. Um, well, but like Frank that, Reich's an interesting one, so let's talk about it. Yeah, that would be the other one. He's got longer odds. But I, I do think this division is wide open. And I know, um, you know, some smart people you're talking about, Raybon and Rebar, who who really like the Falcons to come out of this. <laughs> Sounds like a hardware store, doesn't it? Oh, I yeah. gotta go to Raybon and Re- Rebar to so go get some. I uh, gotta get the, something for the mower. It's broken. <laughs> yeah, two two of my favorite guys. So hard to go against them there, but I, it would not surprise me at all if the Panthers did that. Like I think the Panthers are just as well equipped as the Falcons to win this division if. Bryce Young is all he's cracked up to be. That is the key. If if Bryce Young clicks right away, so uh, maybe not a, a bad idea to go all in on a specific narrative. Frank Reich for coach of the year and Bryce Young for offensive uh, rookie of the year. There you go. And and maybe a little something on the Panthers to win the NFC South too. Joe. He is plus 2,500. I just looked up where it was on FanDuel. That's where Reich is. And also Mike Tomlin at plus 1,600. If he could somehow get this Steelers team back to prominence what a star i mean one of the best coaches in the league that i just think never gets enough credit no matter what the thing is like i know he's like but he's already got the bar at a world record level is the problem since he's never finished sub 500 like tomlin would probably have to go like the chalk right now is dan campbell and i'm running away from it because i don't know what the lions are with expectations and nobody does so let's not pretend like we do let's be very careful of the nfc north more on that in the weeks to come Again, always great talking about these things with Pat Fitzmorris. It's great to have smart opinions where everybody's bouncing off things. We want you to go out there and make your wagers on the all-new updated Betting Pros app. If you haven't checked it out, go download it for free on iOS. And look, it's spectacular. You got the prop bet hit rates. You got the bet tracking. You have the feed. You can also follow us at bettingpros.com slash Joe or slash Fitz and make sure that you go ahead and uh, make that all work for you and make sure that you're uh, also getting involved in that contest, bettingpros.com slash NFL contest. We're going to be giving away signed jerseys. We're giving away premium upgrades. We're doing all that stuff. And speaking of signed jerseys, don't forget, drop your comments below. Subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel. Click that bell till it goes ding and you could win. And Aaron Jones autographed jersey. Doesn't get much better than that. Only a guy who finishes as an RB1 every single year. Talk about nobody caring enough. I care. Pat cares. I know most of you care as well. This was fun. This was great. We're going to be doing more of this, more preseason later this week. And next week, we're going to be talking about some of these numbers with some of these players too, where the future lies for them, who's going to lead the league in picks, in touchdowns, all that fun stuff. We're going to be doing that as well. So make sure you're with us and subscribed up wherever you get your pods to betting pros because we're going to be with you all NFL season long. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Pat. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. 